Hello, YouTube family. I'm Patty Jackson. I'm your auntie of pop culture. I know, auntie is early. There's a lot going on, but we got to get it in. It's not cute not knowing, and we start off with a hug. Come on. Thank you so much for joining me. We got a lot to talk about, and we're going to start off with remembering actor Richard Roundtree. He passed away yesterday at the age of 81 after battling pancreatic cancer. It was over 50 years ago, it was in 1971, that Richard Roundtree burst on the scene with Shaft. And I'm going to tell you why that moment was so monumental. I remember seeing a docuseries that Sidney Poitier did. And he talked about what led him into directing. And he says he moved into directing because his type of character, the good Negro, the good black man, Lily's in the field, guess who's coming to dinner, uh, to serve with love. That type of black man was pushed to the side because Richard Roundtree came on the scene with John Shaft. What made that so significant? You're seeing this fine chocolate black man on the screen in charge and leading. He was a detective. This had not been seen. For many, Shaft brought in the black exploitation era. But to see a Richard Roundtree, he was so fine. What fine? It was a groundbreaking movie. And it changed cinema forever, forever. Cinema was changed because now you would see a black man in in a new light and, the, and they weren't afraid. And trust me, what led into the black exploitation movies, you know, people not original, you get all the copycats that that came through. And, and, and not every, what they call black exploitation movie was bad because you had Ron O'Neill, Superfly, you had Fred Williams, um, Fred Williamson, The Hammer. There were some there were some good movies. But John Shaft, that character, what you trying to lay on me? I am so big on movie lines. Um, he's a bad mother. Shut your mouth. He was an amazing actor. We've seen him in various shows and TV miniseries, Roots, Being Mary Jane, back in I'm trying to think, was it before the pandemic or after the pandemic? The Shaft um, revisited with Samuel L. Jackson. It was the three generations because they did a big thing in Philadelphia and Richard Roundtree was there. What also made a Richard Roundtree stand out, he was one of the first men to talk about having breast cancer. You know, usually you have breast cancer, you don't think of men, but men can get breast cancer too. And he was one of the first to go public his story and his battle with breast cancer. He was surrounded by his family when he died, 81 years old, battling pancreatic cancer. Thank you, Richard Roundtree, for what you ushered in in cinema, in black cinema, and the importance of the change. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He may be gone, but Richard Roundtree will never be forgotten. The Millie Vanilli documentary, child, it is so good. It is so good. It's good and it's sad. It's good and it's sad. Okay, they weren't singing them songs. But do you know that no one else got in trouble and they all knew that Rob and Fab were not singing them damn songs? Arista Records didn't get in trouble. Clive Davis. That's not the first time Clive Davis did little sneaky stuff. Because remember when Whitney used to die? Beverly Hills Hotel, they still had that party and she was upstairs dead. Not the managers, not Arista Records. They knew that they weren't singing, that they weren't the real singers. And the real singers, these black guys, they weren't real attractive. Nobody believed them. They said, oh, don't believe them, don't believe them. And that one manager who was known for using black artists he didn't get in trouble either. They set Rob and Fab up. And of course, they were seduced by the fame, the money, the drugs, the liquor, the women. You know, sometimes if you ply people with enough stuff and they thought they were on top of the world and then that concert, when that tape broke, they ran off the stage. 
they got, they won a Grammy. Wait, I remember that year that they won the Grammy for Best New Artist. They won over Soul to Soul. It's a shame how they were left to hang out and dry. And the sad part, Rob, he really fell in the drug addiction, getting addicted to crack. He died from an overdose in 1998. Fab has moved on with his life. He's been in and out of rehab, but he has moved on with his wife and his beautiful four children and his wife. But this was such a music scandal. And um, Stephen Hill, who was the head of programming over at BET, he said, this is a cautionary tale about the music business because it seems so glamorous and wonderful, but it's a business. And these guys were used and held out from public ridicule and scorn and left to hang and spin in the wind. Nobody else, nobody else got in trouble. What kind of mess is that? It's so good. It's so good. Paramount Plus. It's an excellent. It's, I think it's one of the best I've ever seen. Jonathan Majors. I don't know when they're going to clear him because now they're saying there's a London incident with the ex-girlfriend, with the London police. Now, the girlfriend had to turn herself in because, you know, she attacked him. A volatile relationship. I don't know when this is going to clear for him. Britney Spears. She went back on Instagram to thank her fans. Britney has the highest selling memoir of a celebrity. I told you guys this book was going to be number one. It's filled with a lot of tidbits. What led to her breakdown? What led to her parents and the conservatorship? Her relationship with Justin Timberlake. She still loves him because she can't stop talking about Justin. Justin Timberlake is mad. He is not happy with his book. But you know he's been shady in the past too. Um, there's one part where she said, have you ever heard of an accent? Well, she said he would do this black scent where he would get around black people and try to be down and just sound like he was black. That does not surprise me. Uh, he is not happy. But Britney Spears, she is on top of the world. And she didn't do one interview because she's really not in the frame of mind, mentally, to do an interview. Not one. Jada Pinkett Smith, on the other hand, hers is going down as the worst, as the worst selling, um, one of the worst selling books by celebrity. It is a flop. And for those who don't believe me, um, you can check it out for yourself. The book is a flop. The book, this book has not, has not done well. And she's been all over TV and talking and interview after interview after interview. And her book flop. Supermodel Beverly Johnson. She is 70. She's never had surgery. Little Botox here and there. But she says she wants to be the next Kris Jenner. It was 50 years ago that Beverly Johnson made history as the first African-American woman on the cover of Vogue magazine. She still looks good, and she's going to be unveiling a new show on WeTV. Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible. They're trying to figure out a way to retool it. Because even though the picture took in millions, it cost even more millions to make it. They're scared to release the part two of Dead Reckoning. So we may not see it until 2025 because they're trying to figure, are people tired of the franchise, tired of the Mission Impossible movies? They're seeing how they can retool it so they can make money maybe sometime in 2025. Apple TV going up on their subscriptions. It'll cost you $10. Yesterday, I was talking about The Rock. They made him look like a white man. He was looking like Mr. Clean. They admit it because he's got a wax figure in Paris. And they said, it's an honest mistake. They they must have heard my cries because they added, it was like adding cinnamon to something. Like, come on, give it a little, give it a little color. Just, you know, just give him a little color based persuasion. We, we, we got a little color. I'm giving a little color, and they did, but they said it was an honest mistake. Nick Cannon keeps a gig. He's going to be hosting a new docu-series on VH1 entitled 
future superstars. And Tyler Perry is calling Paramount Plus out. I told y'all they tried to change the price on them. They they were asking for two billion. Then Tyler Perry comes forward and they said, oh, three billion. It's gonna cost three billion if you want BET, BET Plus, and BH1. Tyler Perry said, I wish I would spend money on properties that aren't even worth it. See, people are cutting, they're cutting the plug. It would this would have been such a horrendous business decision. He just signed a new deal with Netflix, but Tyler Perry is saying how they tried to stick him up at the last minute. He is talking about what went wrong with buying BET, BET Plus, and BH1. Whew, very interesting. Leave a comment because I do love to hear from you. Um, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And more importantly, subscribe to the channel because we got the big hair. We got the girls. We got the scoops. There'll be some wisdom. We're going to make you laugh. It's it's like a, a great bowl of gumbo. You get it all. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Patty Jackson. I am your auntie of pop culture.